Well, you tell the left and the right. How long ago was this surgery? Um, 18? 18? Yeah, looks, looks like a big old thing. <laughs> All right. So you're going to do hip flexion. So I'm going to put my hand on his ASIS, and I want to take him to where I start feeling his end range of hip flexion is, and then I'm going to overpress. Doing okay? If I start moving, now I'm starting to move his pelvis a bit more. Okay? So in terms of his hip motion, I'm feeling kind of when his ASI starts to go like in a, in a posterior, almost posterior rotation. I'm taking it to its end range. If I start going further, his hip starts to move, so I'm going to take right there, take end range with overpressure. That's flexion. Okay? Internal rotation. What I like to do and what I encourage you guys to do to get your body mechanics well, so you save your back, is try to get the patient close to you and you close to the patient. So I use my body to move his hip. He feels secure. He feels like he's nice and relaxed. You want the patient to be as relaxed as possible to really assess their passive motion. If they're guarding a bit, you know, when someone has pain, they're going to be guarding a little bit, and you're doing this type of thing. All right, hey, how's it going? Okay, yeah, this is good. Yeah, okay. You know, they're not going to relax very well. You really want to get close, grab their leg, stand nice and close to them, and then rotate your body, and I'm going to take them into internal rotation and take them to end range. Joseph has nice internal rotation mobility for a guy. It's good. Okay? A little overpress. Any problem? No. Now with flexion adduction, this one I'm going to come over him a little bit. And where I'm going to go is I'm going to almost go to the opposite side of the shoulder. Some sources you'll say flex, it'll be a hip quadrant, but we always call it flexion adduction. And so where you're taking them is to his end range. And what you want to feel again is his pelvis. When does his pelvis start to move? And that's where I'm going to stop. If I keep going, then it's just his pelvis and his back. So I'm going to take him to his end range. His pelvis starts to move there. How are you doing? It's okay? Okay. And then there's more things that Jason will show you in the peripheral exam of, of looking at the different aspects. Have you guys done this already? Monday. Monday. Okay. So this just take him to its end range. If that doesn't provoke pain, then you're going to go more aggressive, okay? Now what I'm going to do is go flexion adduction with overpressure, and now I'm going to immediately rotate this femur. So go into hip internal rotation. If that doesn't do it, staying with medial rotation and doing a bit of compression. So I'm really stressing his hip joint. Starting off easy, going more vigorous and more vigorous, because I really want to clear that hip joint, right? He has groin pain, buttock pain. Is it his hip? Is it his back? What's going on? If I do that, I can pretty much say I don't think it's his hip. I'll leave it open, but I really don't think it's his hip that's causing his pain. All right? Or you have that diagnosis of greater trochanteric bursitis, classic diagnosis. Lots of times it can be the, the back, not the hip. Okay?